hi uh, welcome back to um, this video for <coughs> showing you how to to work with the hurricane rotor and uh, this time we're going to see a little bit more about the complex engine management and uh, the mixture control and uh, rpm control uh, here we are with the levers the mixture control is uh, on the left side along with the uh, RPM control and uh, throttle <coughs> so the mixture control has uh, two extra position weak reach and you can set it anything anywhere in between uh, reach uh, will be uh, in this position you need to pull the um, lever back to you or press minus if you have set plus and minus keys or uh, pull back the sticker to you if you have um, it on on, a, on an axis of the of a joystick and uh, you have the same behavior on some other craft uh, such as Blenheim but uh, uh, for example on Spitfire the the lever is rich for um, <coughs> in this position and lean in that position. Uh, by default, when you spawn in, the lever is in a rich position. But remember that if you are uh, uh, running uh, at altitude, you want to lean. You need to pull to pull back to pull uh, to to set the lever forward, then back if you want to become rich again. And we'll see when to do that. The RPM control is over there. So just to show you how the graphics are, we have our maximum RPM here, increase, decrease, and uh, by default you should spawn with maximum. And uh, the power control is here. What do we have next? I uh, want to show you. <coughs> this is uh, your uh, uh, gallons, how many fuel you have. We have already seen this feature. You have here the uh, water temperature, the coolant temperature, and the oil temperature, the oil pressure, the fuel pressure, and the boost of the engine. So that's showing your engine status. And <coughs> um, let's start with the temperature gauge. Uh, the oil temperature um, needs to be about uh, 30 degrees before you can increase the, the temperature, the power of the engine. The coolant temperature has not so much importance, uh, but it needs to be to stay below. Um, well, I think it's 120. Uh, then you will start to to have some damage. Uh, so it's 120 degree but uh, you need to take care to stay uh, some somewhere uh, around 100, 100 degree uh, at the moment the the radiator opening has no influence on the current um, has no influence on the drag so you can uh, remain with uh, radiator fully open all the time uh, you don't have to take care too much about uh, oil pressure and fuel pressure, but this uh, oil pressure will uh, show you the the uh, will give you an indication if the the engine is healthy or not, and uh, the fuel pressure um, same for the fuel system. So in this game, um, the we don't have the possibility to activate the electrical pump. Or maybe it is always activated. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, you have two pumps: the engine-driven and the electrical pumps. And normally, you run with only engine-driven pump. And when the fuel pressure drops down, then you uh, to for, to a critical level, you have to certainly to turn on the electric the electrical pump. Um, you have to monitor this coach, but for, for now this is just to inform you what are, are the reasons for that. The oil pressure I think needs to be about in the middle, around 60 to 90 uh, uh, pounds per uh, square inch. 
and um, uh, you don't need really to monitor that unless you are hit and you have some problems then uh, basically if it drops down uh, if you want to save the life of your engine you need to to stop the, the motor and uh, and uh, fly uh, without any power until you find uh, somewhere to to crash launch uh, however, in that game, uh, y y when you are damaged, you better uh, keep the power until the uh, engine uh, breaks in order to 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 to, to go away and, and find a, a way to to um, to land safely. Well, that's just a matter of uh, personal uh, opinion, and that's the indication of the engine power. So at idle, uh, when the, the engine is uh, stopped, it's just showing the atmospheric uh, somewhere about the atmospheric pressure. And um, when the engine will be running, it will uh, go down to minus pressure, pressure, and that's showing uh, somewhere in the inlet, uh, uh, the fuel and air, uh, the air inlet. So when you you increase the power. The the boost pressure will rise, uh, will increase up to the nominal pressure, and that's showing an indication of the how many of the quantity of uh, fuel that is going to to your engine. RPM setting is here. Nominal is 2650 20, For for climb, you want something about twenty eight fifty, and maximum RPM is uh, thirty hundred. Uh, however, in that game, y it doesn't make any big difference. The only difference is that when you are above 2650 RPM, then the boost pressure will uh, tra will tend to decrease. Uh, for that reason, uh, when I'm cruising, I'm always at 2600 RPM because I have maximum uh, boost pressure and it's quite efficient uh, on the fuel. It should be uh, efficient on the fuel with a maximum uh, power if you need so. Now we switch to the other one. <coughs> you have here the climb uh, and the uh, descent uh, indication. It's in uh, thousand feet per minute. So if the dial shows one, you uh, are climbing at one thousand feet per minute. Um, when uh, you are uh, you are, you have no power, uh, you will be reducing your speed to something around 120 mph, and uh, you will uh, be descending with uh, uh, no power at something close from 1,500 uh, feet per minute. So it's not very good. Um, uh, in term of uh, of ratio, but it's what you have. This uh, artificial region is driven by the um, the a pump, so it's driven by oil. Uh, sorry, by air air pressure. So by air vacuum, in fact. So uh, also there there are um, some uh, inertia inside, which makes it work fine only in stable condition, in stable turn, when you don't have the head uh, upside down or you are in vertical climb, then it becomes completely uh, upset and uh, needs some time. It will return to the horizontal if you fly horizontal uh, for uh, for a certain time. Same for the directional gy gyro. The reason for that is because it's easy to read, and when you are making turns, it's not working at the compass. Uh, the compass just uh, swing uh, from uh, from uh, from a direction to another until it will stabilize after a certain time to the right value, and it's more difficult to read that. So the goal is to set the direction zero to a right value when you have the time and the possibility to do so. And then you will uh, you will correct the directional uh, gyro from time to time, uh, reading uh, the real magnetic heading on the compass, which is here. Um, both those instruments work with the vacuum. So uh, when you are damaged, it made possible that uh, some instruments start to, to fail. 
uh, we have here the speed indication the store speed will be around six, 60 mph but then you have absolutely uh, no control or very very few control over the aircraft if you want to fly slowly you better fly around between 80 and 100 mph then you will go up to 24 to 240 and then you will read here and uh, you have the altitude here so you can set the gyro by clicking here or address keys and you can adjust the altimeter here or address keys so you are reading here the atmospheric pressure of the actual uh, where you actually are no sorry it's it's uh, the the sea level uh, pr pressure that you have to adjust here uh, if you know the altitude of the field you may want to to adjust that for example here we are something 270 280 feet of altitude uh, that's just for uh, the interesting uh, uh, thing on this aircraft obviously uh, all of that is not necessary just for your understanding we have some um, this is this light over there uh, we have here a button switch doesn't work it's supposed to to bring on and off the lights here there are some safety light so where uh, in this aircraft when you don't have any electric power you may not see those one the position of your um, on your carriage so if you're damaged you better uh, then uh, if you want to be sure it's down and locked and you didn't err uh, it's going down and locking you should uh, use the hand the hand one uh, the other systems of this aircraft we have already seen the this position this lever here it has five positions and may be used to move the undercarriage and the flaps uh, flaps in the position indication is here uh, the, for now we should have no control over the flaps simply because the mo the engine isn't running other systems are uh, not necessarily active if you want to lower uh, the landing gear manually you should put the lever to this position and activate the pump we have here the rudder um, uh, trim so you may want to use that in order to to keep this dial centered or the aircraft trying, uh, uh, flying straight we have uh, the tank selection this one we've already seen how it works we have here the radiator position the radiator lever is simply this one and you see it affects the position so we want to start with fully open we have here the trim the um, uh, the trim uh, for, for the vertical uh, uh, the elevator and if we, we want a little bit up it's in this position nose up i'm usually taking off with some some nose up we have here land landing lamps on uh, not sure what this lever is but it's not uh, it's not really working uh, at the moment uh, that's about other systems of the of the aircraft all those uh, levers doesn't work uh, at the moment not sure if they will come one day uh, this um, so you may want to to be able to use the the full power of the engine and as you can see the lever is now unlocked so here i i don't have the full the full capacity to um, to push the lever forward and if i pull that i can go a little bit further and that's uh, using the last uh, horsepower of the engine 